All right, you guys ready for Vicky? Come on, give a round of applause. Hi. Uh, so my story tonight is um, an upbeat tale about uh, the night my dad died. Hold on, it's gonna be so funny. Uh, it's not. Uh, <laughs> So what happened was I got a call from my sister. I live in LA and I'm from Minnesota. And I got a call that my dad um, had taken a turn for the worse and I needed to get home right away. So I wasn't really ready for that. I didn't know there was a worse turn. I, didn't, I wasn't ready. So I get on the plane and I don't remember the plane ride so much, but I remember when I got off, there was a guy in one of those BB cart things with a sign with my name on it. And I thought, oh no, that can't be good news. I, I was so freaked out, I thought maybe he'd already died, but all of my energy went into, do I tip this guy? <laughs> Does he get tips? I don't know, I've never had a BB cart guy take me to the luggage area. So the whole ride, I'm just like, I don't know. Do I have any cash? I don't know, do, do, is he making his living? Is he getting minimum wage? I was very concerned about his lifestyle. And um, so, I, I don't honestly remember if I tipped him. I remember getting to the hospital and finding out that um, my dad had actually already slipped into a coma. And I had missed all the like dramatic goodbyes um, because they knew he was not gonna make it past that. So that was upsetting. But uh, he was in a coma for um, a while. And you learn a lot about people's families when you're in a coma, when somebody else is in a coma. When you're in a coma, you don't learn anything. <laughs> but when somebody else is in one, you learn a lot. And, uh, <laughs> um, and it was that weird place where everybody is connected by this thing, but, but you're not because it's, it's killing you. And, and so after like um, two weeks, I brought up the idea that you, um, you know, that maybe we should um, pull the plug, as it were. Uh, and I don't know where that saying comes from because nobody pulls a plug. There's no plug pulling. Everybody's plugged in. <laughs> but, um, but it was time. Everybody knew. So we decided to do it. And, uh, and about, um, I thought, you know, I thought it would happen like on days of our lives or like, I thought you would pull the plug and there'd be a lot of crying for 10 to 15 minutes. And then at that point, the person would pass and you would be sad, but it would be over. No. Oddly, things don't happen like they do on TV. I don't know if you knew that. And uh, <laughs> so uh, instead, we were waiting for four hours and then five hours. And then, you know, people had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you had to like scream because it's crazy. And uh, right in the middle of that, they wheeled in another woman into our room, a woman who had just had heart surgery. And I remember thinking, well, that's not a good idea. My dad is dying. What are you doing bringing in a woman who's had heart surgery? That doesn't make any sense at all. It's bad management. And um, she was under, um, she had taken a bunch of drugs, and so she was saying crazy things. So, and she's 80 and naked and kicking her covers off, so you get the visual. So, <laughs> So I'm on this side of the room with a curtain, which is very soundproof. And, uh, and I'm like sitting with my dad and we're saying, you know, I love you, dad. I'm really gonna miss you, dad. I love you so much. And from the other side, we hear cinnamon. <laughs> okay, I love you so much. You were such a great dad to me. Cinnamon. I'm really, you're a wonderful cinnamon. And finally, I mean, you can't help but laugh because your life is exploding in front of your eyes and it's like that moment where you're like crying and laughing and my husband says, 30 cc's of cinnamon stat! <laughs> and, and it killed me and we all laughed so hard and it was like this crazy moment. And like four hours later, four hours later, um, the nurse says, you know, it's probably time, his heart rate is lowering and they know like the secret codes and so we're holding his hand and they say, maybe if you tell him it's okay to go, he'll leave. And uh, so we're all saying like, daddy, it's okay. And my, you know, we love you and you're so good and it's okay, I'll, I'll be okay. And my mom says, 
you know, John, you were such a great dad, and I love you, and it's okay, I'll take care of the girls. And from across the room we hear, don't go, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I remember thinking, I remember in that moment thinking, you know, that's what I felt. That was what was inside me. Was I think maybe I gave that woman my words because I was like, don't go, John. It's okay, don't go. Um, but he, he did. And I remember I had my hand on his chest and, uh, and his heart stopped. It just stopped. It was, I didn't know that could happen. <laughs> and later we found out Cinnamon Lady, um, that's what I call her, <laughs> Cinnamon Lady. Uh, knew nobody named John. <laughs> and I thought, wow, that's crazy. But, but she was a baker. So <laughs> we understand that part. <laughs> Thank you.